Hello and welcome back to the BSU Woodwinds channel. If this is your first time here, I am Dr. Lowry. And I'm Professor Weber. Right now, many of you may be preparing for an audition of some sort. This may be an audition for Allstate or even college auditions. So we wanted to go over some tips and tricks on how to best prepare for those auditions. As musicians, there are so many different auditions you may be interested in taking. This can sometimes be intimidating, but we are going to go over some ways to get organized and make this process a bit less overwhelming. Let's start with Allstate auditions. Here are some tips and tricks to consider when preparing for Allstate or district auditions. Let's start with how to prepare the etudes. This may sound like a no brainer, but the first place to start is make sure you're working on the right ones. I know it sounds silly, like I said, but it happens. Sometimes people don't look at the website properly or they click on the wrong instrument, you know, bass clarinet instead of B flat clarinet. So make sure that you are looking from the very start at the correct etudes. Next is scales. Sometimes for all state or district auditions, you'll need to play scales. Make sure that you're playing them with the preferred way that the judges want to hear it. So that's usually marked on the audition website, right? In the exact same spot where you find those etudes. So look over that really thoroughly. Next is sight reading. A lot of times you might have to sight read in an all-state audition. So how can we do this in, in a really clear and concise way? Here are five steps toward better sight reading. One look at the key. The very first thing you should do is look at the key signature. Number two, the time signature. What time are we in? Number three, accidentals. Sometimes there's accidentals in sight reading. I know, pretty rude of them to throw us off like that, but here we are. Make sure you look at the accidentals and then you carry it through the measure. Four, weird stuff. That's kind of in rhythm, right? So is there syncopation? Are there ties? Are there rests? Check out those things. And then number five, we're going to look at tempo. So check out the tempo. Are there fast passages? And then right before you start, you're gonna check out that key again. So once we've looked at this, you know, we know what etudes we're preparing. We're thinking about scales and the right way to play them and sight reading. You know, those are all things that we can prepare for but what happens on the actual audition day? Well, number one, we need to check in, right? So what time do you check in? Make sure you have a note of that. Remember as musicians, early is on time. So you wanna make sure that you get there in enough time to find where you park the car. And you wanna make sure that you know what entrance to go in, where the actual check-in happens. Do you do that at the audition room or is there another table that you check in at? Make sure you know those things before you show up. Once you know that, I would arrive, you know, at least 30 minutes early to give you enough time to do all those things I just said. After you check in, I like to do two things. I like to know where I warm up and I like to know where the actual audition room is. So if you checked in at the audition room, great, you're one step closer. If not, you're going to want to go find that room. Also find the warm up room. So speaking of the warm up room, let's talk about warm ups. How early should you warm up and how much time should you spend there? Well, I think this has to do a lot with personal preference. So I'll tell you a little bit about my warm up routine. I like to just play some long tones. I know that sounds a little bit boring and you're like, I'm about to go into this crazy audition. It's so hard and it's a big moment for me. You want me to play long tones? Yes, I do. I want you to play long tones and I want you to get your heart rate down. So get, get that going. You can start articulating, you know, quite quickly, warm up your tongue on some of, some of those long tones, but warm up the whole range of your instrument. Get your heart rate down. You can play some scales. You can then, you know, touch tricky passages that you may have in your, in your actual etudes that you're using for your audition, but don't overdo it. Don't play things over and over and over again. It might, it might only psych you out. So we don't want to do that. Warm up enough to where you feel comfortable. Remember, you've done the preparation. 
nothing magical is going to happen now, right? It's not the time for practice. It's just time to warm up and get yourself mentally ready to walk into the audition room. So give yourself enough time for that. I wouldn't warm up more than half an hour. Um, that's, that's my personal preference. So whatever feels best to you, but that's my recommendation. So once you've warmed up, not too early, right? Not too early, close, close enough to your audition time. Um, it's time to wait outside of the audition room. So here's some things I bring this up because, you know, this is a tricky thing. So waiting outside of the audition room, here's my thought on that. You don't want to be just sitting out there. A couple of things happen when you just sit outside of the audition room. One, you hear everybody who's before you. So you're going to start hearing them and you're going to think, oh, wow, I'm not playing like that. That's not how I'm choosing to play that etude. Maybe I'm wrong, you know, but maybe you're right. So you don't want to start second guessing all of your musical choices right before you go into the room. Okay, so that's something else to consider. Um, but also, you don't want your instrument to get cold. You know, you've spent all of this dedicated time warming up to make sure you feel comfortable and your instrument sounds the way you want it to. Don't blow it by sitting outside of the audition room for too long. And you also, you know, just don't want a long line of people listening to you. So don't create a long line for other people who are auditioning as well. Lastly, let's talk about the actual audition. So you go in. What happens if you squeak or you have a little finger blip or your reed, you know, makes a strange noise? That's that's the life sometimes, right? That's okay. We're human. We're musicians and we're playing live music. So things happen. Take your time, take a deep breath and, and just do the best you can. That's all you can. That's all you can ask for. So take your time, take a breath, take some water in if you need it, take a swab in if you need it and just don't rush the process. Remember, you prepared. So that's that's my advice for preparing those, those all state and district auditions. I know they can be scary sometimes. Tons of people are auditioning all the time, but you got this. Now let's talk a little bit about auditioning at a university to be a music major. So first let's start with the actual application. When is it due? You know, here at BSU, our, our music applications for scholarships, that application is due on February 8th, right? But oftentimes, um, schools have a university application, so you have to be accepted to the university. Then they also have a music application, so you apply to the School of Music or the Department of Music as well. And then Sometimes you also have a scholarship application on top of that. Sometimes the music and the scholarship application are combined. It depends on the school, but those are potentially three different things you need to look for that could potentially have three different deadlines. So you want to check on check on all three of those things and make sure you're really organized and have all of your stuff ready to go. When are the audition dates, right? That's important to know. When is the actual audition? You know, are there multiple audition dates? Some schools have multiple weekends throughout, you know, the end of January into February, sometimes even early March that you can audition. Some schools only have one. So here at BSU, you know, we're looking in February at just the one weekend for scholarship auditions, right? Um, so make sure you check that. Um, and that is usually found on the actual music website and you can find out what dates and you can plan because some of you may be auditioning at multiple schools and you need to plan accordingly where you are going to go when you're going to travel and, you know, make all of your arrangements. Um, and then what are the music requirements? So you know, a lot of schools will ask you to prepare um, a specific piece, um, specific etude, maybe a specific excerpt. Um, and, and that may change school to school. So some may be exactly the same, some may be different or just have one or two things that change, but make a list. That's what I would do is I would make a list of the schools you're interested in and their requirements and then compare and contrast and figure out how much rep you are willing to prepare and then go from there. Um, when you're looking at these schools, I really encourage you to take a look at the professor. Reach out, ask for a lesson. Right now, we're really in the times of taking Zoom lessons. You know, 
Um, a lot of schools will offer complimentary lessons we do here at BSU. Um, so if you are ever interested in taking a lesson and you're interested in studying with a professor, oftentimes they will give you a complimentary lesson and you can find out if you click with that professor. It's really, really important. And in that lesson is a great time to go over questions. So how big is your studio? What are your expectations for your students? What is your teaching philosophy? Do you have any scholarships available? And, and go from there. And then a lot of people are curious about what actually happens at a university audition day. So let's start with this. What should I wear? So you want to look professional. If you're going in and you want to study at this school of music, you know, if you want to go to this school, you want to, you want to dress the part. Now, in saying that, you know, look nice, dress like a professional, but be comfortable. You don't want to wear restricting clothing where you can't breathe and you feel tense all day. You'll be nervous enough, I'm sure, and you don't want your clothing making you more nervous. So professional, but comfortable, be able to breathe. Similarly to our last topic of all state and district auditions is check-in. So same thing, figure out where you check in, what time you need to be there, and then arrive early. Early is on time. Check in early, figure out where you need to go. Is there a warm up room? All of that, same as last time. The main thing with warming up, you know, you don't want to blow your chops before you even walk in the room. So don't exhaust yourself before you even go into your audition. And then the actual audition, unlike all state and district auditions, which are sometimes blind, a university audition is usually the opposite. Usually you can see the people you're auditioning for, whether that's, you know, the applied professor and maybe one or two others or a whole panel, usually you can see those people. So introduce yourself, you know, I, you know, I am Hillary Lowry, I am here to perform my audition, you know, smile, say hello, things like that. And then, you know, same as any other audition, take your time, give yourself a minute to breathe, take your swab with you, take an extra read if you're a read instrument in with you, take some water just in case. Um, so be prepared, but also just take your time, take a breath, and then you prepared for this, do, do what you work so hard to do and show them what you're made of. And then lastly, when do you know how you did? Well, this varies. Um, you know, sometimes you'll hear from the professor about scholarships, you know, we're happy that we can offer you this scholarship. Sometimes you have to wait and hear from the school. So it could, it could be a little bit later in the spring semester, but be patient, you will hear something. All right, so that is how uh, I would I would go about preparing for these auditions. Follow these steps, take a breath, and do your best. So you've had a successful audition, now what do you do? Deciding on the right school has, there's a lot of things to consider for this. To be honest, I've auditioned at several schools um, in my time as a student, and I like to think of these auditions as interviews, and I like to think of them as a positive sort of interview experience. First of all, yes, of course, the school is interviewing you to see if you would be a good fit for their studios, for their ensembles, are you the kind of player they want, but you also get to interview the school. Is this the school you want to go to? I like to focus on that. Honestly, I like to focus that, on that during my, my audition rather than sort of um, worrying and being nervous. I like to think about, okay, well, you know, we come into the school and be like, okay, show me what you've got. And I like to think about this as more of, will I be happy here? Can I learn and grow here the way I want to? Will this school prepare me for the job that I want when I graduate? things um, to think about as you're considering this sort of um, perspective. Think about your lesson if you were able to get one with the applied uh, studio faculty. Did you like their teaching style? Could you picture yourself in their studio? Did you get along well? Did you, can you learn from them? Um, were there other professors that you met, um, such as a band director, other ensemble directors, even if you were able to sit in on an academic classroom? I don't know, in COVID style, if we, you can make that happen. Every school is a little bit different about that. But if you can sit in on an academic class, did you enjoy that? Um, were there other playing opportunities for you at this school? 
if you wanted to play in another ensemble, another band, choir, uh, what have you, does the school have that? And is it what you'd like? Other things to consider is obviously uh, financial considerations as far as scholarships. Every school is different for the amount of money that they have and for the um, size of tuition. Um, scholarship applications for some schools are trickier than others. Um, so all of the financial um, uh, opportunities and um, considerations go, can go into that, obviously. Another thing that's important to think about is what camp, what life will be like on campus outside of just the music building. We do encourage you um, to leave the music building, even if you're a music major, at um, at regular intervals. And so, camp. The idea of the thoughts about campus life is this uh, is this thought about um, athletics. Are you an athlete? Is just does the school even have the sport that you want to play? Uh, but even if you're not an athlete, there's a significant amount of um, other recreation. Um, it's usually called intramural if it's a sport, but there's also um, recreation as far as there's usually some sort of fitness center, hopefully at the school. Does it, is it the, have the equipment that you want? Is there other um, recreation? For example, um, Bemidji State has an outdoor recreation center. So there's um, winter and summer um, sports that you and equipment that you can always rent out uh, so, so some schools have that sort of equipment as well there's also clubs a lot of schools have uh, clubs and all kinds of things there's um, dancing clubs and book clubs i think i went to a school once that, that had a quidditch club so these are all sort of um <clears throat> excuse me these are all sort of clubs and groups that might be of interest to you outside of just the uh, music building, something to consider as well. Um, so round out the rest of your experience on campus. And other things to consider would be housing. Where would you stay? Most schools ask that um, or require that you stay in the dorm for the first year. So that's something to think about. What kind of dorms are there? Would you like living in a dorm? Um, what kind of meal plans are that? That sort of thing Those also things to consider. Thank you for joining us on the BSU Woodwinds channel. Just a reminder, the BSU scholarship applications are due February 8th and the link is posted below. We hope to see you again next time. Bye.